The problem of evil and suffering isn't a big part of the GCSE syllabus, but it is an important part of the philosophy of religion. And uh, it's worth knowing something about the topic because it will give you an insight into what Christians think about suffering and how they can alleviate it. The problem of evil is essentially this. Um, classical theism, which is basically what Christians, Jews and Muslims believe about God, think God is omnibenevolent. This means that God is perfectly good. And if he's perfectly good, he would have a motive to get rid of evil. We also have a God who is omnipotent, all-powerful, and therefore has the ability to get rid of evil. Why, therefore, is there suffering and evil in the world? It would appear to either suggest that there isn't a God, which is what atheists believe, or that God isn't either omnipotent or omnibenevolent. There are ways around this, and these are called theodicies. Um, there are two very famous theodicies. One is from a man called Augustine, and the other is a free will defence or uh, theodicy from a man called Irenaeus. Augustine believed the Bible suggests that the uh, world is wholly good. In Genesis 1, we are seeing a creation that is free from defect, evil and suffering. God creates the universe and the world perfect. And as a result, as God creates all things that are good, evil is not good, obviously, and therefore God did not actually create evil. Evil is therefore not really a thing. Evil has no positive nature. The word evil really reflects upon things that are not good, so it is like the privation or the lack of good. Darkness in that sense is a bit like no light. It doesn't really mean that darkness exists as a thing. Darkness really only exists when there's no light. Evil is also uh, split into two types. The first type of evil is called natural evil, and this is defined as evil or suffering caused by a natural disaster. This could be a famine which is caused by a drought. The other type of evil is called moral evil, and moral evil is evil that is caused by our own individual behaviour. So it's suffering caused by greed, anger, envy or selfishness. Another theodicy was presented by a man called Irenaeus, and he thought that evil could be traced back to human free will. He differed from Augustine by saying that God did not actually create a perfect world. Evil has a part to play in God's plan. The reason for this is because if the world was perfect and always good, we would have no reason to strive for anything we would always get what we want immediately there'd be no suffering in the journey so for example if you could all get an a star or a nine in gcse without really trying it didn't really mean anything it doesn't really count for anything at all so what Irenaeus was arguing is that evil is necessary as a means of helping us to become a better person the things that happen to us in our lives which are bad teach us valuable lessons and make us a better person. So as it says on the slide, we grow into perfection over time. This ability to choose to be better, of course, relies on us having free will because we can't actually make real choices about what to do if we don't actually have real freedom. So we have to believe that free will is real. Free will is actually a really difficult area in philosophy, something that is not relevant to discuss at this stage. But if you do pre-U, A-level or IB philosophy, you'll certainly have a lot more to say about freedom. What evil also does, according to Irenaeus, is it allows humans to develop important qualities like compassion and mercy. And these make us better people. And if we didn't have these difficult 
times where we had to manage suffering in our own lives or in the lives of others, we really wouldn't be the sort of people we want to be. He believes that evil and suffering will eventually be overcome and we will become like God. Um, you might remember in Genesis it talks about humans being made in the image and likeness of God. What Irenaeus suggests is that we're made in the image of God, but we only become like God over time. And this possibly can include developing these qualities after death in the sort of limbo state between death and entering into heaven. This process of development is a bit like the way that you are made in the image of your parents in the sense that you have their DNA or genetic similarity but you become more like them as you develop you develop adult more mature qualities as you go through your life one of the big problems of evil is that it leads people to question their faith many people feel that the huge amount of suffering in the world possibly caused so for example the suffering in Syria today or the suffering in the Holocaust or the suffering of African children in famine means that it's almost impossible for there to really be a God who cares. Many leading atheists suggest that this shows that God just doesn't exist. Even practicing Christians do doubt the existence of God at key times in their lives when they may suffer significantly, maybe through ill health, or the death of a close family member. But a lot of Christians also see uh, suffering as a test of their faith and they point to a man called Job. This is a sort of allegorical story of a man who is tested by God in the Old Testament. Evil is a means of testing us. Suffering tests our faith. And of course for many Christians evil is not caused by God at all. Many of the natural disasters of the world are caused by normal, everyday events. There's nothing intrinsically evil about an earthquake. It's just a natural phenomenon, or a volcano, or even a tsunami. What suffering is, is when human beings are affected by it. But if there was an earthquake in the middle of nowhere and no one was hurt, no one would blame God for anything. It's just because we've built houses on top of um, fault planes that it causes suffering at all and of course many of the problems we have with moral evil are also just caused by our selfishness and greed and lust and arrogance and we really can't blame God for that we need to take our own responsibility for the actions that we um, inflict on others that cause pain and suffering of course Christians also look to salvation Jesus provides the possibility of eternal life with God after death if you accept his death and resurrection. And so Christians don't just look at this life, they look at the life after this life, the life with God in heaven. So the problem of evil is a big problem. It's not easy to solve and you certainly can't solve it in a five minute video. But hopefully this will give you some sort of insight into what challenges evil brings to the everyday Christian person.